Yo, this is my third, I think third, second or third time trying to do a part two of a Q&A, but this time it's actually happening. Roll it. Welcome back to the channel, everybody. Channel's name is The Third Ernest. I'm Ernest Adiano the Third. Y'all guys are the third family. If you're new here and you like what you see at the end of the video, consider becoming part of the family. Click and subscribe button, bottom right hand corner. Now, if you're on this channel and you're not in the Discord because you've never heard of it or you don't know what it's about or you don't, you don't, you know, you're not really familiar about the whole thing, it's just a big ass, it's basically a big ass chat room that's specifically for people that are subscribed to this channel. So you're commingling with other people who are subscribed to this channel, whether it be for NF, whether whether it be for 21 pilots, whether it be for whoever the hell, it's a fucking vibe. And Discord is the best way to connect and talk to me because I'm always in there and we're always thinking a new shit. Like recently I was asking, what should I do for the 100,000 mark? It's dope, dope as fuck. I'm, a, I'm all about Discord. But without further ado, let's go ahead and hop into these questions. I got them screenshotted, screenshotted, screenshot however you say it. Now, because there's 1300 people in the Discord, there's gonna be a lot more questions on the Discord side of the Q&A. So these answers might be a little more rapid fire than the Patreon ones. Like I said in the first video, and like Discord people confirmed, Patreon is a little bit more civilized Discord, not so much. Now, first question we got is from Here's Johnny. That was his that was his username for like a day. It's actually Splooey. That's that's his actual username. Sploo is what I call him. He says, think you'll find more time to keep up with your drawing skills, maybe share it more often. Yes, I definitely do want to put more drawing, at least doodling or at least mural type of drawing on the channel again. I had to like step away from it just because I started a new job. I wanted the channel to grow and grow, so I had to put all my energy into reactions but definitely vlogs, definitely uh, definitely drawing, definitely challenges, definitely getting my friends on there, thinking of, thinking of like competitive games that I can record and put up there so y'all can, can basically see the way my life is. But yes, I definitely wanna put more drawing up on the Discord. My bad, up on the channel. Good question, man. It means you've been around long enough to remember doodle time. That's old school. Next, we got Prince C. Barry. <laughs> my moderators have the, have the ability to change people's nicknames, so they sign up with one name. If they think of like a joke or something or trying to make fun of them, my moderators can change that person's name without their consent. So a lot of these names that I screenshotted a couple of days ago, they're not even the names of these people anymore because they change like every other day. But Prince C. Bear says, are the Easter Bunny and Santa real? Both made up, both part of the big pharma Ponzi scheme. But if you're a child who's under 10 years old, they're both definitely real. And then right under that, Night TBNR Loser, am I real? You tell me, technically we're not all real. This is a simulation. The only people that are real are the ones that are plugged into the simulation in the matrix. You know what I'm saying? Next, we got Melissa Dean. Melissa also had a question in the Patreon because she's a Patreon subscriber now. So she gets her question guaranteed answered over there. She happens to be on this thread as well. She says, how many pair of shoes do you own? I've recently started to get the shoe game back up. The ones I'm wearing right now, bah! Uh, the Nike Air Max. I don't even know what they're called anymore. Vapors, Air Vapors. Uh, I got one on the way, some Nike 720s. Yeezys, four, Yeezys again, five. I probably have somewhere around like 13 pair. And I hope to increase that as I go, because definitely shoes, I like the whole culture of shoes. Actually, on the 100,000 mark, I'm gonna buy some spe some limited edition, but I wanna buy some shoes to hit that milestone. Just so that way I can say, I obtained these shoes that I never thought I was gonna be able to obtain when I hit a major milestone on YouTube that I never thought was possible. Next, we got real boba till the day we die. Who is your favorite sports teams? I'm from San Antonio, Texas. Two, one, oh. I'm from San Antonio, Texas. That's the area code. So we got to go Spurs, obviously. But that's basketball. Baseball, I'm a fan of pretty much all Texas teams except the Houston Astros right now because of the fucking cheating scandal. Yes, cheating is part of baseball. Yes, you get an upper hand by cheating, but you don't use digital equipment. The cheating that I find is okay in baseball is the type of cheating where you outsmarted your opponent. You did not have any assistance to outsmart your opponent. You just used your wit and that's it. That type of cheating I can tolerate because that's just like, damn, charge it to the game. You know what I'm saying? Using digital devices to steal signs and like tap on the shit whenever a curveball or a changeup is coming, that shit is definitely not allowed. The Astros are fucking lucky that the season is definitely gonna be canceled because of COVID or else they be getting beamed nonstop as they should by every pitcher. So the Astros, but I'm kind of mad at them right now. The Rangers, but they're kind of, they, they fucking suck basically. They're in rebuild status. And then the New York Yankees. And I'm a New York Yankees fan because my mom was a New York Yankees fan growing up. So obviously I just fell in love with the Yankees in the same way that she did when she was a kid. Next sport is hockey. I don't give a shit about hockey. I'm from Texas where it's 111 degrees 
degrees in the summer and we don't ever see snow. So hockey's not exactly a huge sport down in Texas. And when it comes to football, I'm obviously a fan of the Cowboys because I'm from Texas. I'm also a fan of the Kansas City Chiefs before they won the Super Bowl because my grandma for some, for some random ass reason is a Chiefs fan. So that makes me a Chiefs fan. And Patrick Mahomes is, is bad. He's, he's good as fuck. Next, we got Kelly, 30 seconds to Mars Senpai. Kelly, I don't know if her name has changed, but I've said it before in a couple of videos past that Kelly is one of the two moderators along with Rini of the Discord. She says, what was your favorite vacation? Where would you like to go on vacation that you have never been? Favorite vacation, yo. The New York vacation right now is up there for sure because we did a lot of things. We went to the MoMA and that for me, someone, someone who's really into art, like seeing some of these originals, yo, blew my mind. I saw the Campbell's Soup, I saw the Vincent Van Goghs, I saw the Lilies, I saw Starry Night, or what is it called Starry Night? I think it's called Starry Night. I saw Basquiat paintings, I saw Jackson Pollock paintings, yo, that shit was crazy. And then we went to our little like small pencil store, the pencil store that's in the vlog. I don't know if any of y'all have seen the vlog, but it's called CW Pencil Enterprise. They're also on Instagram. Check them out because I just love, love this, this pencil shop. If you don't know, I, it's, I said it in the vlog as well, but my mom and my aunt, for some reason, die hard pencil collectors. Like what? Who collect, who fucking collects pencils? And then they got me into collecting pencils. So I have a drawer full of, so this is just a small collection of the pencils. Mom went to Hershey's. This is a Hershey's pencil from the Hershey's Chocolate Factory store that smells like Hershey's, like it smells like chocolate. This right here is a black ninja pencil. The entire thing is black. I don't even know where she got this from. Black wood on the interior, black graphite. You got a little ninja guy right there. Dope. This one right here, Red Sox, Chicago. This one right here, four scores and seven years ago, President Abraham Lincoln. I'm pretty sure this is also from Philadelphia. This one right here, we got from CW Pencil Enterprise, and this is a Palomino HB. They they collect pencils like mad ladies. Right here, another Chicago White Sox pencil. Right here, this is a pencil from Cancun, Ticonderoga, which is my favorite pencil brand. Who the fuck has a favorite pencil brand? Like, if someone came up to me and said, Do you, what's your favorite brand of pencil right now? I'm gonna shoot you in the face. No fucking problem. Right off the top, Ticonderoga, I already know. It's not even a question. This one right here is straight from the White House, I believe. No, I lied. This is from Mount Vernon, George Washington's estate. This one right here is the Valley's Forge Historical Park. This is what they do. They, they buy pencils and they send them to me. This is a Star Wars, oh no, my bad. This is Butler Bulldogs. This is Butler, the, the university. And then this one right here is a multicolored pencil from MoMA, again, from New York. So this one has multiple tips and it, and it changes colors as you write. Who the hell collects pencils? You know what I'm saying? Who would have thought that we planned an entire trip in New York just to go to this pencil shop and it lived up to the hype? But yeah, so far probably New York takes the cake. Oh, and here's one from the Fields Museum in Chicago. It's the museum that houses Sue, the Tyrannosaurus Rex. She's the most complete Tyrannosaurus Rex in the world. I think there's two that are that are almost fully complete and she's one of them. Also, I'll leave a link down in the description for, for the New York trip videos and then also for the New York recap video that I did. Dope. Prince C. Bear again asked, do you think Michael Jackson's music is fire? Of course I think Michael Jackson's music, he's the king of pop. You know, like there's no one like him that has the type of reign that he did. The only person that comes close vocally to sounding almost exactly like him is The Weeknd. Bruno Mars is probably the closest in terms of vocals and performance because he does a lot of dancing and he puts on a nice show. Justin Timberlake is also someone that I think is like the super mega star level like Michael Jackson was. So those three, they're like the closest that you get, but they're all missing something in order to be as good as Michael Jackson. So yes, I like Michael Jackson. I even like Jackson 5 music. Underrated goat song, Ben by Michael Jackson and the Jackson 5. Been the two of us, we look no more. If you ever look behind and don't lie why you find. Anyway, Ben, fire ass track. Zai Kuhn asks, hey professor, hey. Have you gotten any older music which you would love to break down but don't have the time to? Yes, I do. I have a lot of older music. It's not that I don't have the time to, it's just I'm trying to build the channel right now and older views, older videos and older music, they don't get the same views. So my efforts are better put into newer music, especially music that's that's in the forefront, like coming out, it's hot out the oven. Once the channel grows, I got more eyeballs on it. So that way I'm like, I'm showing more people how good older music can be. So yes, I do have that and it will be coming just once the channel grows a little more. SPM are fantastic. Do you ever or have you ever gone by Neto? My name is Ernesto Ernesto Ariano III, but my family never, never called any of us Neto. I technically go by Ernie with like my close family and friends, but anytime I'm introducing myself or, you know, if I'm talking to people online or what have you, I introduce myself as Ernest because I'm 30 years old. 
you know? Prince C. Bear again, will you adopt me? No. Next, Reckoning Fate, which tattoos do you have? Also, respect for the tattoo dedicated to your brother. Appreciate it, Reckoning Fate. I only have two at the moment. I got this one, which is also me and my brother. I designed this one. It's two triangles or two pyramids. One's upside down, one's right side up. And then on the sides, we're holding each other up inside of a cube. So technically, it's an abstract concept. This, this is a brother. It's a brother tattoo. He is the same one, but it's an, an abstract concept. And then this one right here is the only other one that I have. I've explained it in the past, but I'll explain it again. This is a, obviously it's an anatomical heart, but my brother went through cardiac arrest and died during a basketball game, was revived and brought back to life. So it's the heart. And then this is an electrical cord that goes around because right now he has an implanted defibrillator right here under his left rib or under his left armpit. So it's on the left side to signify that. But those are the only two that I have right now. Next, we got Ver. So this is this is his name in Discord. And the reason it is that is because his profile picture is a picture of a fucking of a hair blow dryer. Do you always dissect songs out loud when you're when you're listening to them? And if so, does it ever get on your friends and family's nerves? I don't ever do it out loud to the point where like a lot of people didn't even realize that I had this talent within me. The only person that I ever did that to was my cousin, my cousin Fidel, when we went to go see Lupe Fiasco. I was trying to like on the drive, I was telling him, he just reminded me of this the other day. I was like trying to get him into the music a little more before we got to the concert because we drove from San Antonio to Houston. So during the drive, we were listening to The Cool and I would pause it and I would explain like why that was a bar. I didn't call it back. I didn't call it that back then. I was just like, yo, this is dope right here. Let me tell you why. And he's like, oh shit. Like that, like that meme from the guy in the wire. You could see that in his face as I was doing it. So I guess that was like foreshadowing to this YouTube channel like eight years ago. But nah, I don't do that because it would be mad annoying if I did. I only do it here because y'all guys opt in. Y'all guys are voluntarily watching these videos. If I just, if I pause music in the middle of a car ride just to explain something, I would fucking hate myself too. Next we got PHNX, is that Sphinx? Plus one. Tattoos are addictive. Any more planned? Yeah, but I mean, I don't know where, I don't know what. They're all gonna be, all of my tattoos, if I get any more, they're all gonna be in places that are, you can't really see them. You can see this one like underneath, but I'm not gonna get like a whole ass sleeve. Definitely not getting any neck or chest tats or anything like that. Yeah, I, I just don't know what they will be. And because of COVID, I don't know when they will be because everything's shut down. I cut the person's name off on this next one on, on accident, but I, cause I like, just a screenshot and it says, the younger generations listen to music in a different way. Do they listen to music in a different way than when you grew up if so then how so if you ask that question i'm sorry i cut the name off but yes they definitely listen to music in a different way first off it's hella accessible way more accessible than it's ever been with streaming and with internet and with digital and with smartphones in your pocket at all times you can definitely access music at any point any time of the day whenever wherever basically so i would say it's much easier to get into music because by the time that i was able to hear it when i was growing up you needed a major record label in order to back you in order to get it out there and push it out there to the entire you know the global audience now you can basically do that on soundcloud just one hit maybe somebody makes a dance out of your song on TikTok, and boom all of a sudden you're famous so because of that i would say they definitely consume music differently but artistry in the music as well is also different because because anyone can upload anything at any time there's not as much it's not as it's not as dense in terms of like good music there's a lot of there's a lot of bad music that's out there that you have to sift through it, and, and it takes a lot of time to do that so if you're really into music a lot of people can find a lot of hidden gems otherwise I would say everybody's listening to the same top 40 like it like they always have next we got SC merciless I don't know if you're from South Carolina or if those are just your initials who knows but you say what is a saying that you try your best to preach and practice every day anything from philosophical to socially even religious whichever I don't know if there's an exact saying or anything like that like I don't I can't think of anything where I have it on my wall I would just say that I try to be true to self every single day like I, I'm not trying to be anything more than I am I'm not trying to be anything that I'm not I'm not out here faking it trying to impress people you either like me or you don't like I am who I am if you don't like me I'm also not going to get offended by that I'm not for everybody, you know? But yeah, I would just say be true to who you are. Don't try to like, don't try to impress anybody by like throwing out this big ass persona or doing like something that's out of character for you because if you impress them, then what? Like you're gonna have to live into that character for the rest of your life? Like fuck all that, you know what I'm saying? I hope that helps. I hope that comes through on the channel as well. I hope you can tell that I'm just being me. President Barack Obama is up in this piece. Appreciate, what's up, Prez? He says, if you had to end one rapper's career, meaning that they could never make more music, 
and their legacy would end without with their latest project. Out of this short list of rappers coming up, it's underneath, who would it be and why? Lil Wayne, NF, The Game, Tyga, Drake, MGK, Lil Dicky. Tyga is probably the one that would have to go for me because I really, I'm not really a huge fan of Tyga. Drake, obviously not gonna say Drake. Drake is an icon. He's the biggest star that this generation has ever seen, bar none. It's not even close. And Lil Dicky, fuck no, Lil Dicky's way too good of a rapper. I would never take him out. If I took him out right now and the only album that he had was Professional Rapper, it would slaughter most rap today. That's a good question, but the answer is easily Tyga for sure. Here's another good question. Too many people use Simon. Whatever that means. How many hours of footage do you record for one video? Uh, it depends on the length of the video and depends on how bar heavy the video is. A bigger project or a bigger song, like something with Royce the 5'9", where it's a five minute song, that might take me 40 minutes to record because I'm stopping it, saying what I gotta say, rewinding, finding, the, finding where I left off and stopping the camera and starting the camera again because the camera only records 30 minutes at a time. So it really just depends, but it's probably anywhere between about 15 minutes and 45 minutes is the very longest. That's a really good question though. No one's ever asked me that before. Pabu, P-A-B-U, what was your first job, favorite job, worst job? My first job was Best Buy. I sold computers in the PCHO, which stands for a personal computer home office. I sold those, I was like, I was the best at it. I worked with my cousin. It was a very fun environment for a 19 year old person to work. I obviously didn't make a lot of money doing it, but it was like an extremely fun job to have. My favorite job was for sure working at Best Buy. And that, that might actually be, that might be my first and my favorite job. My worst job, I worked at Bill Miller's as like a bus boy for like three weeks and I said fuck that I'm out of here so I was like bussing tables and throwing people shit away and all that didn't like that at all Mac 51 says hello Ernest big fan from Lebanon sup Mac big fan of you being a big fan of me from San Antonio Texas who is the most underrated rapper alive or dead I would probably say at this point, Lupe Fiasco is probably the most underrated rapper ever, especially considering how strong his pen game is. Like he's by far top five, top five lyricist ever. But a lot of his music, because of the way his deal with Atlantic was structured and they were giving him so much shit, like a lot of his music wasn't seen because it wasn't promoted in the way that it needed to be. I would also say YBN Cordae is probably another artist. Like a lot, when he, when he was up for rap album of the year, a lot of people didn't even know who he was. A lot of people don't know who he is because of the fact that he came up with like this mumble rap generation. He's only what, like 21 maybe? He has a cosign from like J. Cole. He has a cosign from, he has a cosign from Royce the Five Nine. Like a lot of major rappers who have a lot of respect in the game have a lot of respect for YBN Cordae's pen. Next, we got Agent C. C is in Charlie. Would you ever consider doing a fan meetup? Of course, when Corona is over. Yo, I didn't even think I would ever get big enough to even say that I would consider doing a fan meetup. I mean, I would, but I would have to to get way bigger than even just a hundred thousand because I would have to have enough there would have to be enough people to first know who I am and there'd have to be enough people in one location to know who I am to even think about going somewhere to do a fan meetup and it wouldn't be like a surprise it'd probably be something that I discuss in discord to figure out where I'm gonna go and who can and who can go where but yeah I'd, I'd wait I'd be way down to do a fan meetup ups and down says top five collaborations you think they went so in on the track you can't pick who went harder doesn't matter the era yo uh Notorious Thugs, Bone Thugs and Harmony, and Notorious B.I.G. Fire ass iconic track. Uh, Sicko Mode, Drake. Uh, nah, I'm just kidding, that's Sicko. Eminem and Jay Z for sure with, with Renegade, obviously. Eminem and Dr. Dre with Forgot About Dre again, obviously. That shit bangs. I probably couldn't decide between these two because they have a lot of singles together, but The Weeknd and Drake, I would probably say if I had to pick one, it would probably be The Zone off of the mixtapes or off a of trilogy, I guess you could say, The Weeknd's trilogy. It's The Zone featuring Drake. These are just off the top of my head too, so they could be completely different if you ask me tomorrow. It's gonna be between two. One of them's rap and one's electronic music actually. So I Remember by Deadmau5 and Cascade, yo. And then on the rap side, it would be Young Jeezy featuring Kanye West, Put On. Put On, Kanye West verse, one of the best verses I've ever heard from him, ever. But there's five, really six, and they would probably change tomorrow if you ask me again, but I'm sticking with those for now. That was a good question though, it made me think. Oh, and by the way, the question earlier, we're talking about the people nowadays, how do they listen to music, how do they consume? That was Night TBNR Loser. And actually to vindicate myself for not knowing the name earlier, he left a second question, is there such thing as too many bars? Hell yes, there's such thing as too many bars, god damn. Like sometimes, and I've said it before, and it's not like it's a bad thing, but it is a bad thing whenever the song and the subject matter of the song 
isn't structured for hella bars. Like if you're trying to get some type of message to me, if you're trying to tell a story, if you're like a storyteller rapper and you're trying to make one cohesive story that I could play out in my mind and I can see it happening, I don't want you to be fucking spitting like crazy ass bars because I, I don't need similes and metaphors. My Your message is gonna get lost within the bars. If you're showing off, go for it, do what you gotta do. But if you're not showing off, if you're trying to like make a story, if you're trying to make a story, just leave the bars and make the song, make the song hard as fuck with the story. Sphinx plus one again, time capsule 2020, what should we put in the time capsule to represent the year so far? TikTok and the coronavirus, that's it. And he or she also asked, how does it feel to get a shout out by Jesse Reyes? Yo. That shit was fucking dope. Just the thought that Jesse watches these reactions and the fact that Eminem has said that he also watches these reactions, that just means that there is a high possibility that Eminem himself has seen this channel. And that fucking blows my mind. And not even just Eminem only, like any, any major artist that sees this video, like we just had the other day, the Falling in Reverse lead singer, he watched my video on his stream. Like, what the fuck? I was watching him watch me watch him and I was fucking nervous. I was like, Damn, did I grade him properly in his own eyes? But it's dope that to think that I might have been seen by people that I watched growing up. And they validate the way that I run my channel with the in-depth breakdowns, with everything that goes on, with all the analytical feedback. They validate that by saying, this dude is smart. This dude knows his shit. Like even down to the camera moves and camera work, it's fire. Prince C. Bear, just because you asked about my cat, what's your cat's fight record? If I had to like put a number on it, I'd probably say like seven and one. Salosin, I think that's how it's pronounced. Salosin 03, this is a legit question. So this one we're answering for sure. Do you think that the death of certain big figures in the rap community, example, Tupac, Notorious B.I.G., but also more recent figures like Juice World, or the retirement of others should be considered as a loss to the community or rather as an opportunity for new rappers to come out and show what they have to offer without having to stay in the shadows of those who have already achieved greatness? That's a fucking great question. Now, when it comes to all three of these people, Tupac, Notorious B.I.G., and Juice World, all of their deaths, considerable losses in the hip hop community for sure. These dudes had like all the potential to put out album after album after album. And whether it's a loss in terms of like the quality of music or whether or not a smaller artist can shine because now they're gone and now that spot is now open for someone else to fill. I mean, yes and no, based off of the two generational gaps that you gave me. You gave me Tupac and Biggie and then Juice World. For Juice World, I would say no. His death does not, does not provide the opportunity for someone else to come in and fill that spot because the way, like I said earlier, the way music is distributed today, anybody with a microphone and a computer and any type of skill set can make a song and can have it blow up. So Juice World in today's world, there's not, there's not any rapper that's holding back another rapper. The only people that are holding back these rappers are themselves. But back then, I would probably say that there is some truth to the question you asked, because back then you couldn't you couldn't just distribute your music however you wanted to because you needed a major record label to back you in order to push it out there the entire world. That wasn't possible. So you had to you had to like have some type of impression on an AR or on a music record label exec or whoever in order for your name to get out there. But today you don't need that. Today you can just go and do it and the, and the consumers decide whether you're good or not. They cut that middleman out. So I would say yes back then, but no now. That's a really good question though. That ends today's video. That ends the second portion of the Q&A. I finally made it. I appreciate y'all with all the questions. If you like what you see, please consider liking the video and leaving a comment down below. If you like what you see enough, consider subscribing because that thing helped. We're actually almost at 82,000. But follow your boy on Instagram and on Twitter. If you also want to get your questions in, obviously follow the Discord. That's where all these questions came from. And like I always say at the end of all of my videos, go out there in the world, love and care for one another, love and care for each other. I'll catch everybody on the next video. Peace.